right, y'all. Uh, we are my brothers and I, uh, David, Jordan, Scott, Eric. Scott, Eric, and I are the real brothers. Um, Jordan is not. It's pretty sad, actually. But I'm just kidding. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Waiting by the window when all I hear is silence. It was a moment to let you go. But know that your star that flies across the galaxy and our homes are loving gravity. I'm not sure that I could pick out my favorite thing about my job. I mean, let's be honest, I get to work with some really cool creative people and over the last several years, I can without a doubt say that I have become more creative just by association. But this may be the first creator session where I felt like I became a better person just by connecting with these guys. My brothers and I are made up of three brothers and their best friend who's been in their life forever. What really struck me though, was how they spoke about each other and the relationship that each of the members have with one another and the impact that each of them have on their success. There is not one member of this band that has more weight or authority than another. And it's quite a beautiful thing to see them speak so respectfully about each other and the talent that they individually bring to the table. This is a really cool session because their connection to the band and to each other and to the music feels so effortless. We're gonna jump right into the song. It's called Missing You. Distance won't be easy, but you're worth it. I haven't really had to miss you. Uh -huh. But babe, now I'm learning. Uh -huh. Cause there's something about your love that I need some more of. Could be so hard Only eight hours away by car Doesn't make it any easier on my heart When we're four hundred miles apart Cause there's something about your love That I need some more Apart. 
Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I say thank you as if I can hear you applauding, but I'm going to assume you are through the virtual world. Through the virtual world? Uh, is that how so that was, yeah. yeah. That is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for. I forgot. Uh, that was called "Missing You." Um, that was actually, I think that was the first song. Our new album is called "Love Is." By the way, uh, we just released it a few weeks ago. Uh, that I think was the first song off the new album, in terms of writing. No, actually, we wrote one a long time ago called "Alone." Regardless. Anyways, that's really just dumb information that didn't matter. <laughs> I thought it was the first one. But it wasn't. So it was the second song we wrote for our new album, which is not as interesting. But anyways. Uh, so I'm trying to think. Anyone have some fun tidbits on that one? Details. Details. I have one. Can I have a mic, sir? Yes. Ooh. For me, it was Introduce fun. Yourself. My name's Eric. I usually play bass. For me, it was cool because I think it was maybe Jordan's idea to do like a muted picked bass line and then we used a bass that was in the studio and it sounded super like Beatlesy, and that was like the first time I've ever done like a muted picked bass part before and it turned out amazing Sounds so nice. it's cool to like play a bass part you practice it you get into the studio and somebody tells you to do it just a little bit differently and then it kind of becomes like a character or whatever I don't know yeah. it was really cool though that's the part I remember a little solo a little fill there it's amazing the other part I like was the guitar solo yeah is that what you're talking about um, the guitar solo scripted guitar solo. with yeah scripted guitar solo I know it's maybe I don't know you would think like oh it takes the allure away because it's like I'm singing what he's doing so it's maybe not as like oh he just made that up but that was something we decided to do it was really fun like kind of unique a lot of times people just do a guitar solo you know what I mean but we were like let's do a voice slash guitar solo um, and piano and piano. Yeah, there's like three instruments all doing the same. You count with the melody first. And I and that's the thing too. I don't play guitar. Um, so and I'm kind of more of like church worship piano player. Like I'm not very good. And so uh, and that's not a diss on church worship. <laughs> that's not a diss because I do church worship uh, at our church. So it's not a diss at all. I, I'm making fun of myself. But uh we'll cut this all out. Yeah, we'll cut this all out. We'll cut this out in post. We need to say that throughout. That's the joke. We'll cut this in post. That's the joke. Oh, okay. Anyways, so a lot of times I write with my voice, just vocally. If I have something I want or a guitar solo I want or just an idea for him to feed off of, I usually just sing it with my voice, but we ended up keeping it this time, which was kind of fun. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. Should be pretty good. Yeah. So I guess on to the next one. Which is? We can decide. We can decide. Long distance. Okay. So this next one is called Long Distance. This was the first single we released, uh, which is true. It's not the second single we released. Uh, this one was fun because I think a lot of times we struggle. We are very much singer-songwriters. Like, that's kind of the vibe we end up landing on a lot. We like a lot of music and Scott, I mean, he'll end up writing a bunch of hip hop beats and stuff and we've got a lot of different influences going on and jazz music, but I think a lot of times what comes the most natural to us when writing is like a singer songwriter vibe. Um, so I think writing upbeat songs is a little bit more of like an exercise for us and it gets us out of our comfort zone a little bit. So this next one is a little more upbeat. Um, if you go listen to the produced version as well on our album, um, it'll sound a lot different than this, but I think, yeah, it's always fun. It's always fun and a, a little bit of an, a, an experiment when we write an upbeat song. Because we know we, we got to put some upbeat songs on the album. But, um, yeah, I don't know. This one was just uh, a fun one. I think when we wrote this, I was actually listening to Sean Mendez's album. I can't even remember the name of the album. But it was the song Lost in Japan. And I just loved that song. It was, like, upbeat but still kind of, like, acoustic -y. Uh, and it was a really cool, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in that. And I was like, I kind of want to write a song like that. So then I plagiarized it and made different <laughs> words. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. We'll cut that first. We'll cut that first. <laughs> just keep saying that. They'll, they'll make us look good. Um. You start? Last night I struggled to say how I'm feeling. Cause I've never done this. And it isn't easy. 
So please be patient while I find my footing Cause I wanna learn, wanna get better for you I don't know how I did the first 22 years without you 22 years without you Cause now I barely can go half a day without you Half a day, guess this is long distance Long distance, long distance with you Guess this is long distance Long distance, long distance with you Last night you struggled to say how you're feeling Cause I know you're stressed out and your days are busy So let's be patient It won't always be like this Man, don't feel bad, I know you're trying I don't know how I did The first 22 years without you 22 years without you Cause now I really can Go half a day without you Long distance, long distance, long distance with you. Guess this is long distance, long distance, long distance with you. It gets so hard to sleep at night with you here by my side. Well, I guess this is. Mistake the no, whole that song. No, that was amazing. That was amazing. Those rhythms can get like the conflicting rhythms can get crazy. So it's perfect. I can't tell that you're I'm not complimenting being, his laughs. I'm not being sarcastic. And I don't know what you're doing out there. You're not being sarcastic. I feel like I played pretty well. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I literally said that. You didn't make the mistake. Okay. No. <laughs> that's that's what you for. No. <laughs> we'll I'm, cut that in post. We'll cut, we'll cut that in post. I'm not being sarcastic. We're actually gonna. Record in all the things we did wrong. Uh, that's how you do it in showbiz. Just dub it in. I can't give a compliment. I'm actually lip syncing this whole thing. <laughs> well, that was long distance. Um, I feel like I said a good amount. Is there anything in the studio, fun wise, that anyone remembers with that one? Recording it. I'm trying to remember if we. I feel like that's the one we experimented a lot with like snare. Like, I remember Scott was doing like. Percussion stuff. Well, he was doing like, oh, let's try wax paper on the snare. Let's try this small symbol on the snare because that's kind of a tight sounding yeah. percussion group. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of percussion in the uh, recording. Um, a lot of layers, but uh, should definitely go check out the recording. Um, mm -hmm. We just did the best we could. I think it was pretty fun the way we just played it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's always a, a challenge with an upbeat song like that <clears throat> that has a lot of layers to strip down like this and, and pull it off but we talk about that a lot like the sign of a good song 
is when you can play it, you know, you can play it live with backing tracks, or you can play it acoustic in a, yeah. in a living room, and it still translates. So, you know, I think we, I think we pulled it off. That's pretty good. So you be the judge if that's a good song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. You can vote now. Just Text vote in. Now. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. So this next one is, uh, like I was saying, it's, I think the singer-songwriter stuff comes a little more naturally to us. Um, so this one's definitely a ballad. We all, actually I should say too, we all are songwriters in this group. Um, we all contribute to songs or maybe have like, you know, each song on the album could be someone else's baby at the beginning. Uh, this one was Eric's baby. Uh, he kind of did the, the, the first gr brunt of the leg work for this one. And I think maybe we helped with some of the finishing up some of the verses oh, yeah. as a group. But um, yeah, so this was just, uh, I don't know if you have anything storyteller wise about this yeah. one. Yeah. Um, this one was written my senior year of high school, I think. And it was originally like a ripoff of. Is that long ago? Yeah. Well. well it I was, guess missing it was a third song no, you wrote then in that case. No, I know the story. It was originally inspired by um, Jack Johnson's Bell, B E L L E, Bell, Bella. It's like a very quick sounding song. Sounds like it's straight out of Paris. It's like a lullaby. It's like a. That one. Um, so originally it was like that. And then I started digging into more of like a Jeff Buckley music era. And I was like, okay, this like constant picking, like a. I don't know. So it's kind of like both those songs put together yeah. were my inspiration. And then, yeah, it's weird to write a song that long ago, and I just didn't think it mixed with the EP we had re released before. And then when we are going through demos, we were listening to it, and we are like, oh, yeah, we should include that on this yeah. list. The hard thing, too, is, and we've talked about this before, Scott and I have talked about this, is I think we could pump out an entire album full of ballads. Like, it's, it's something that's easy, but we have to pull back and vote on the best one or whatever we do. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I enjoy it. For sure. So here's uh, the one that got away. Bye. 
part of you inside of me There's a part of you I can't seem to, can't seem to let go There's a part of you inside of me I thought I'd let you know to you, sing a song for you, tell the world that you were the one for me, the one that got away. Mm. Yeah, nice yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm going to give it up to Scott on that song, he did a really good job. That was a good one for him, I think, especially. Nice job. Um, I really feel it. No mistakes. No Scott mistakes. didn't make a single mistake. <laughs> That's probably extremely hard to play on acoustic now that I think about it. Yeah, the Those notes are high. The hyper is. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a fun one to play. Eric like, plays guitar on the produced album. You yes. Check it out. A nice sounding Telecaster. Well, yeah. I that, guess we're talking about the sound of that, too. Well, that, yeah. that, that, well that day he had... Like his the Telecaster, yeah. like his Telecaster there. I was like, okay, this is sweet. And then he had his amp there. I was like, okay, this is sweet. And then what he did was he he did a mic like normal, but then I think he did like three different room mics. Yeah. So te it sounds like there's four. Yeah. It's just like you're hearing it from different parts of the room. Yeah. So the solo does sound like you're. Si I don't know. I always think you're like sitting at a cafe. Yeah. A cafe. <laughs> you know, what I mean? or like yeah. s s you know, listening to. Yeah. In the corner, like you're, it's not even live. They're just like playing, and you're on date, but you're like it's kind of distant. Yeah, yeah. That's how I feel. This one. Yeah, that's cool. Man. That is cool. Jordan's more more poetic than I am. We'll cut that out in post. So <laughs> <laughs> that won't get old. Uh, okay. All right, I need to retune because this is a weird one. I'll be honest, I have to pee pretty bad, so that's okay. You well, for people that don't know. Um, where my brothers and I, we are based out of Portland, Oregon. Currently, we're in uh, Rick Grill. Is that how you say it? Is that technically what it says? Beautiful house. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, and our, our, we just released an album called Love Is. Um, speaking of the producer and your guitar part there, yes. it was produced by a guy named Brandon Rush, who is in a band called Priory. They had a song... What was it weekend? Reached like 15 on billboards. And then um, super lucky to fall into like a connection of a connection and was able to have uh, Craig Alvin. Craig Alvin? Nashville. Mix. Yeah, we got to go to Nashville and have Craig Alvin mix the project. He's known for his um, Grammy uh, mixing Casey Musgraves Golden Hour. Great album. Mm hmm. We're gonna cut all this in post. I'm just no, David's we peeing, won't. so. No, I like it. David. Never on the mic. David never takes a pee break, so. First times for everything. I could talk a little bit about this song. <laughs> That's a good idea. So this is a perfect time for David to take a little bit of a break because. Now that we're back from the commercial break. Um, we had no idea how to play this live because the chords are pretty interesting. So, I'm doing a tuned down D, and then I have a reverse capo on the just the four highest strings on the seventh fret. Because the chords are pretty weird, even on guitar. So, anyway, and I'm not very good at playing guitar, so this is a great way. <laughs> this is a great way to cheat the system. So, um, I don't know. I hope you guys like it. It's it's similar to the recorded version, but. Like Scott said, sometimes you have to change things around. Sometimes those become even better than the original. We'll leave that up to you. We'll probably just cut all that out in post, the but probably cut all that out. What are we playing all the night? Uh, waiting by the window? For some reason, I'm bragging all the night. This guy, <laughs> this guy <laughs> thought we were playing a different song. Nah, I can play it. Just kidding. Just kidding. It mainly is. It mainly is. Okay. 
This is the song that has the least amount of words, but I still don't know them for some reason. <laughs> I can't remember them. So we'll see what happens. Cool. Talk about that. Yeah, this is kind of like a, almost like a hymn. It doesn't necessarily sound like a hymn, but a hymn in the sense of there's not a lot of words in this song. And so we kind of, rather than fleshing out, you could say fleshing it out more in terms of like lyrics to make it more interesting, we were like, well, what if, again, kind of a fun experiment, what if we tried to make this song dynamic in other ways, like support it with all the instrumentation and add little bits throughout the song as it grows so that it keeps you engaged and you almost forget that there's not a lot of words. Um, so it does have a lot of repeating in, in a lyrical sense, but I think it, it does definitely, especially in the recorded version, if you guys listen to the album, um, it definitely, I think we did a good job of, of making it interesting and keeping it engaging despite the few words. You're gonna hear it, it's, I'm gonna be like singing three words all the time. It's not that few, but yeah, this is Waiting by the Window. on the horizon Waiting by the window When all I hear is silence It was a moment to let you go But know that you're a star that flies across the galaxy And our homes are loving gravity I'll be waiting by the window My heart on the horizon There was a moment to let you go But know that you're a star that flies across the galaxy And our homes are loving gravity I'll be waiting by the wind Uh, so we just want to give a big thank you to Creator Sessions and Convert Kit 
uh, for having us, for, for offering this opportunity up to us. We love doing things like this. We love just stripped down, vulnerable, like this is what we love. We, whether it be music, lyric, like, you know, these types of environments for live or even lyrically, we, I think that's kind of something we like to convey in our, our lyrics a lot. And in the songs we write is just vulnerability and, and not being afraid of brokenness. Um, and so I think things like this, uh, doing shows like this or, you know, virtual things like this is just super fun for us and, and something that we feel really passionate about. So we really appreciate you guys having us. Um, and yeah, we can't say thank you enough. And again, we're my brothers and I, David, Jordan, Scott, Eric. Um, we've got an album, Love Is. We've got a website, mybrothersandiband.com. We've got a talk tick. We've got a tweeter. We've got an inst Insta... I can't... That one's Instagram. harder. Instamash. I was going to Insta Instamash. Mash. We've got a MySpace page. Um, we do? Or, no. No. <laughs> I love getting the chance to really connect with creators that I respect as a part of the show. And something that I absolutely loved about my conversation with Eric and David was them reflecting on how they look at chasing their dream in music. The music industry can be this really competitive place and the pressure to make it feels real, but these guys don't look at music that way. David said, we embrace that we're not the guys that are gonna sell ourselves to make it, or change who we are to make it, or put children on hold to make it. We're gonna live our lives and pursue the relationships. He went on to say that maybe that actually hinders them a little, but their mission is to show you that you don't have to put your life on hold to pursue music. They just wanna be normal guys that don't compromise the wrong things to make it. What I hear in that is that they want to have it all, but their all probably looks different than yours. And their made it does too. That is kind of the beautiful thing, right? We all get to choose where our happiness is derived from. And for these guys, it is right where it is supposed to be. Let us know in the comments what your favorite moments, songs, stories, and lessons were from today's session.